Why, why, why do I stand up here? I stand upon my desk to remind myself that we must constantly look at things in a different way. The world does look very different from up here. Come see for yourselves, come on. Given ordinary people with the right tools and methods, we can also build the most extraordinary things. But this process takes time. Now is my time to share how I take notes in lectures. Feet rem note. Hello, I am a dental and psychology student currently living in Shanghai, and those are the timestamps on the side. You're welcome. Since young, we've always been told that we should be grateful for everything that we have, and including getting educated and have the money to go to university. I really like the process of learning since young. I just love this whole process of novelty that it brings me. It gets that dopamine hit to me. The anticipation of just wanting more and more knowledge, I have a sense of pleasure, but I just can't enjoy the process. Same with taking notes and listening to lectures. Although it is a part to understanding, it just somehow didn't work. We all know our potentials, but we need to find a way to tap in this system of learning. It's a casual morning and I get out of bed lazily to go to 8am lecture. I just sit there and passively absorb information and I hope that things just stick in my brain. The lecture pretty much just reads off the PowerPoint and hope the students like me to understand the information in a linear fashion. When something suddenly clicks in my mind, I take notes in my iPad. I just copy and somehow rephrase the things I listen because I want it to stay with my memory. That is called transmissionism. But I didn't realize that it was impeding my learning process without even realizing it. And since classes have moved online entirely, I have a hard time adjusting to this new environment. Till now, I am still struggling. After thinking and pondering for a while, I was just creating an illusion of learning. I was finding a standard operation process for learning all the subjects because I'm lazy to try new things and fail. But thinking back now, it is actually very illogical because everybody's mind works differently. I always had the desire to learn, but somehow my outdated tools just didn't allow me to do that. Now is my time to share this journey with you all. This new baby system is Remnote. Note. So now it's time to fight the lecture opponent. But how do you fight it? The first step that I asked myself is that what type of subject is this? I could define my enemy that I'm gonna tackle. Is it concept based physics? Is it content heavy biology? Or is it logic heavy calculus? Or it is critical thinking and analysis based writing and literature? After thinking this whole process through, I found two common grounds. One is that knowledge and learning work is really incremental and anatomical. It means that all knowledges are built on top of each other from understanding the basic and going on top to the pyramid. This is called bottom up processing and learning. Remnote is the one because this is exactly how Remnote's organization works. Each bullet point acts as an atomic building block to the knowledge base of and use descriptors and concepts to explain your understanding for any topic within your own hands of control. Pretty much just typing on the fingertips. There is also a built-in space repetition algorithm and active recall for later reviewing. And bye bye iPad! Because there's too much information overload. Lastly, the most important thing is that the bottom-up learning process is supposed to be hard because deep understanding takes a connective work. Before I sneak you guys into my total lecture session, I shall get prepared for this process. I will upload the related files and documents towards the source part. But remember, when you upload the file, it can only be in PDF. And then move my mouse to the document and shift click where it brings up on the sidebar. Or I can view my notes and the PDF slides on the same panel. I get tortured for two hours in the lecture by the bombardment of novel information. I wish I can open my skull and show you my brain, but I don't think the connection will be uh, visible that it will just be a whole bunch of neural tissue mush under the microscope. For today's example, I'll take you guys through endodontics anatomy. For those who are a curious cat and don't know, endodontics anatomy means the study of the structures inside the tooth. As I go through this lecture, guess what? I have found this new Chrome extension. It's called Video Speed Controller. <laughs> I absolutely retain nothing. 
Oh, and don't worry. Of course, I stop when I have a question or I don't understand something. Oh, and is that a typo? And find out the purpose of this lecture. Like, why do we need to learn about anatomics and anatomy in studying dentistry? Oh, so we need to understand the structure before we treat it because form follows function. After asking the purpose, I will start scoping the lecture, which means that I go through the outline of the lecture and I will use command option one, two, or three to size the title depending on the hierarchical organization of the lecture. Then I start to take notes as how the lecture is presented to me. If I understand the concept, I will try to explain in my own words because note taking is for better thinking, not better note taking. To demonstrate a concept that I definitely understand will be the basic structure of a tooth, which is the crown and the root. The crown is all the white part you can see when you open your mouth, and then the root is the part that you cannot see. But when I explain those concepts with descriptors by typing two colons and making them a flashcard directly, I will type the shortest definition possible. For example, the tooth is made of two parts, the crown and the root. I find a delicate sweet spot. This means that not taking too much or too little note. Because I already understand what crown and roots mean, I won't write that way too complicated. Am I thinking clear enough? And can I explain this concept? And if the thinking is clear and I really like the explanation of words that is presented on the keynote, I would just use the PDF annotation function. When I highlight a text and press Command Enter, it turns it into a rem reference. The quotation mark on the little toolbar means that you quote the whole text. And if it is the pin, it means that you can click on that pin and it brings me back to the reference in the lecture slides. So if, or if it's a case study of a patient or x-ray, I will also enter that because with medical and dental world, pictures are so crucial with understanding. I will press the control button and then just drag it like a screenshot so it is already in your database. You don't, it works exactly like the text references, but it is a picture. A pin also brings you back to the reference and the quote button pastes the picture you're onto your notes directly. After taking on the notes and annotations, I can click on the little sticky button on the PDF viewer toolbar to see all the highlights and picture references that I have made throughout this lecture. During the lecture, the professor points out a concept of anatomy that relates to other lectures such as the invasion of bacteria and how to treat a tooth. Some of those key phrases that I particularly look for are As mentioned a few weeks ago, this is similar to the case before. Do you remember what I mentioned in the past lectures? Whenever I hear those words, I think there is a connection between things. I will use the search portal or link function by pressing the double bracket button. I begin to use metacognition. This is where you get into my brain. So what is metacognition? Cognition, huh? It is thinking about thinking and knowing about knowing. I can also visualize my concepts through Vendo through the graph view. This is also really appealing to the soul of the visual mind. It seems so magical when I think back on how this process works. Whoa, how did I understand all those things? Those neuron connections are just rewiring. Again. Of course, there will be things that I don't understand. And then I will start forming questions here and there. As I look through those black and white pictures of teeth, how do you locate those tiny orifices and canals? And what is the pulp floor? What is the law of centrality? What is the relationship between the pulp floor and the orifice? I go through a really standard operation process for generating a question. I know it is kind of robotic, but trust me, it works. This is metacognition in the process. The first question is that, can I summarize this concept to a five-year-old? If not, what is the exact concept that I don't understand? The third one is forming questions using the why, what, and how are the three words that I use the most when I try to form a question. Can it be a purpose of the treatment? A reasoning behind of how this procedure works or simply what is this thing or what is the difference between this and this so how do i not disrupt my workflow of taking notes and forming questions there's also a solution for this i tag the subject and questions and then all of the questions of this subject will be under this tag and then the fourth one is how can i recognize this gut feeling of anxiety and brain fog when i don't understand something as i train and i will better catch myself on pinpointing which concept i don't understand and after this whole bunch of mess of questions they somehow make sense and they group together within different categories under the outline the story of endotonic anatomy that i'm trying to write to myself starts to form just when you think you know something, you have to look at it in another way. Even though it may seem silly or wrong, you must try. Now, when you read, don't just consider what the author thinks. Consider what you think. And then let's go to the office hours for asking those questions. Because why would you want to spend two hours googling those questions when you have someone to ask? Hello, welcome. 
Come ask me questions, huh? Remember the tag that we used during our process to not interrupt our workflow? As the professor answers my questions, I will write the answer solely on this page instead of skipping around through my whole document of notes because that is just low efficiency. The picture really starts to make sense and it builds together as a really beautiful weaving knowledge. The climax of the story is over and we're closing down to the resolution because I've come to a calm that I have understand everything. And during this whole process of writing notes, I will also have already turned it into a flashcard on the gold card. Thank god it's built in. <sighs> and now, after the lecture, everything is set and I don't need to do any note taking after the lecture. Lastly, to conclude this whole process of taking notes, we want to summarize what we have learned. I use the template function. Before all this, I will have created a template inside Power Up Rev and turned it into a slot, and the icon would be a little four square button. This template is called Things to Know because when Final World run, we also don't have time to scroll through the whole and lecture. Yes, even scrolling through a short page of notes is too much effort. The first line will be objectives from the lecture. The second one is what are the main points. The third one is what I struggled the most from learning for it the first time. So then when I come to review the flashcards, I will know which one I would spend more time. So how do you insert the template into the noting? I press the double square bracket on the keyboard and it brings up the template page with all the templates I have created until I search the things to know template and then I click add all rims into the document or by simply pressing command option P for the hotkeys and this brings up the template with the questions that we have mentioned before so here I have written down the objectives of endocrine anatomy is the purpose of knowing anatomy is for the accurate penetration and treatment of root canal in order to prevent procedural accidents and then some of the main points are the laws of locating the orifices some of the things I struggle with the most are the laws of location in orifices and symmetries because it is hard for me to visualize those words spatially. The journey of how the brain handles information and understands how the handpiece penetrates through the tooth and get through the pulp and the canals to treat it seems like a little adventure. So after battling this whole lecture, I've come into a lot of realizations. The most important thing is I need to own my learning process and trust my intuition to guide me to find the process that fits me the best. Boys, you must strive to find your own voice. Because the longer you wait to begin, the less likely you are to find it at all. The second one is that the way you ask questions, break down knowledges, and learn for the subject really depends. Because for calculus, instead of memorizing all the theorems, just practice and apply those theorems directly into problems. And for science, it is about breaking down knowledges and explaining to other people. And hopefully my story inspires you somehow to not give up on finding a method that works for you. And if you like this video and want to start on the note taking journey process, check out my video on how to choose the best note taking app for your note taking styles or if you have chosen RevNote as your soulmate, here's a basic overview on how RevNote works and all the function that it serves you. And all the best, all the best, so all the best, so all the best, so all the best, so all the best to finding a best learning workflow for you. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye!